Welcome to section 5.2, the inverse matrix. The goal of this section will simply be to define what we mean by the inverse of a given matrix and to give some examples. So back in chapter four, remember that we defined the matrix I as the identity element for matrix multiplication. So that's a matrix that has the same role as the number one for real numbers, right? Which means, well, we expect that when we multiply A times I, we'll get A. And if I multiply I times any matrix A, it'll also give me A. And notice here the I is not necessarily the same size, depending on whether it's on the left or on the right, if A is not a square matrix. So since I has the same role as the number one, then we expect or we feel it's reasonable to say that uh, whatever the inverse matrix A is, when we multiply by A, we expect to get I. And same thing on the other side. Actually, here there's a little mistake in my notes. If there is also in your notes, then please correct it. In my notes, it said the same thing twice. So this should actually be A times A inverse equals I. In other words, this inverse matrix needs to work on both sides. And so that leads to the definition of an inverse matrix. If A is an n by n matrix, then an inverse of A is an n by n matrix B, such that AB equals BA equals I. And as you can see, we've defined the inverse for square matrices. So uh, A is an n by n matrix, and those are the only matrices for which we will define um, an inverse matrix. Now, you notice I said an inverse matrix, and I said an inverse matrix. But in reality, the following theorem says that if a matrix B exists uh, that has these characteristics, then it's unique. And so if A is an invertible matrix, then its inverse is unique. And let's prove that. We can do a little formal proof of this, as we're going to do for a few other statements in this chapter, uh, so that you don't have to take my word for it. So if A is invertible, then the matrix is, the inverse matrix is unique. Let's suppose that that is not the case. So suppose that there were two matrices. So suppose that B and C are n by n matrices matrices such that such that AB equals BA equals I and the same thing for C. So AC equals CA equals I. In other words, suppose that there are two such matrices that satisfy uh, this condition. Well, in that case, let's write AB equals I and since um, we have another matrix C, then let's multiply both sides of this equation by C. And so I'll have C times AB and C times I on this side. Whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. Now we know that matrix multiplication is associative, so I'm just going to move these brackets here. CAB equals C times I, but of course C times I is just C. And as you can see, we said in our premise, suppose that CA equals I. In other words, I can replace CA here with I times B equals C, which of course just leads to B equals C. And so what does this mean? Well, simply that if you suppose there are two matrices that satisfy these conditions, well, it actually turns out that it has to be the same matrix. And so we could add here the conclusion that the inverse, inverse of A is unique. And we just proved that. And so since that inverse is unique, then we don't need to say an inverse, but the inverse. And we're going to introduce a little bit of notation. We'll say that uh, if B is the matrix that satisfies this condition, then B is the inverse of A. So we write B equals A inverse. And as I pointed out here, you read this as A inverse. So we point that out here, that this is A inverse, or you could simply say the inverse of A for that notation. But careful, and I'll point it out here, we don't uh, consider the minus one an exponent here, so we don't have this, right? This notation does not exist. Not true. Okay, so this notation um, is, in fact, I'll simply say a not equal to one over a. Okay, um, here, we could probably a simpler way of saying this is to simply say A inverse is not equal to 1 over A, and there's no such notation. So let's just see right away an example. 
of an inverse matrix. So notice here we're given uh, matrix A, 1, 2, 0, 1, and we're asked to check that A is invertible by applying the definition. What does that mean? Well, simply that we have to show that AB will equal I. And so AB is 1, 2, 0, 1 times 1 minus 2, 0, 1. So matrix multiplication, by now I think we pretty much have the hang of this. Uh, so first row times first column, 1 times 1, 2 times 0 equals 1. Uh, whoops, equals 1. And of course we could do the same thing with, um, with first row times second column, first row, second column, and 1 times negative 2, 2 times 1, we add negative 2 plus 2 equals 0 and so forth. And if you do the rest of the matrix, you'll get zero and one. In other words, the identity matrix. And of course, the same thing will be true on the other side, B times A, one minus two, zero, one, one, two, zero, one. And if we carry out the matrix multiplication the same way, we'll have one, zero, zero, one, which is the identity matrix. And therefore, we have that both AB and BA are equal to I, and that's what we wanted to check. One more example. And here in this case, we're asked to show that this matrix is singular. So if you remember in our definition, singular simply means not invertible. And how do we check that? Well, first of all, let's look at the question. It says show that A is singular. Show is another way of saying prove, right? So prove means that we can't just give an example, but we need to show that there is no matrix that satisfies the definition. So how do we do that? Well, let's define a generic two by two matrix. So let B equal A, B, C, D. Since it's only, there are only four entries, we don't need to bother with subscripts. We can just write A, B, C, D. And what we need to show is that no matter what these numbers are, A times B will not be I. And let's see if that's the case. 1, 2, 0, 0, times A, B, C, D. Let's carry out the multiplication. So 1 times A plus 2 times C, 1 times B plus 2 times D, and 0, 0, right? And so this will be the matrix A plus 2C, whatever those are, and B plus 2D, and these two positions will be 0. But of course, that means that this entry, right, this entry cannot be, is not equal to one. And if that entry is not equal to one, then no matter what these values of A, B, C, and D are, this cannot be equal to one, zero, zero, one. In other words, it cannot be equal to the identity matrix. Okay? And therefore, our conclusion is that uh, there is no matrix. There is no matrix B such that, such that, AB equals BA equals I. And that proves that A is singular.